Hello, Grandma DC here. My camera's at an angle. And I'm not going to fiddle with it because I had all kinds of trouble just getting it to balance up there in the first place and the cats are trying to knock it off anyway. So I made myself some pork carnivore dieting as usual. And I put a little bit of sugar-free uh, barbecue sauce on it, which makes it the best. I've cooked it now for about 12 hours in the slow cooker. Mmm. One thing about the carnivore diet to me is flavor. You need flavor. Don't suffer with just dry meat with only salt on it. That's just horrible. I went the other day to a uh, Chinese restaurant with mother that we have in Sedalia. Oh, hang on a second. I have an old lady that's wanting to get up on the couch. Oh, there you go, Bets. And um, they had a Mongolian. And this is a new one. It's just in a town that's closest to me. And uh, I was really disappointed. <laughs> Terribly disappointed. They didn't have any sauces to choose for them. All they had was just like garlic and hot sauce. And their meat was cut into cubes instead of being thin sliced. So it would just be like chunks of meat that would probably be pretty hard when you flash fry them. So, uh, yeah. I ended up choosing off of the buffet. What did I choose? Well, they had a peppered beef and I picked all the beef pieces out and got rid of the peppers. They had, uh, as my kids call it, cat on a stick. It's chicken on a stick. <laughs> and um, that was pretty dry, but I got that. And then luckily they had cold shrimp. So I ate a bunch of cold shrimp. You can manage on this diet. It struck me though, as I was eating, that had I been regular dieting and went into some place like that and I couldn't find anything that, you know, I and I would have been so tempted to cheat, I'd have been like, oh, I want some of that sweet sauce, sweet and sour chicken, you know, all that good stuff. And I want, you know, all that crunchy, crispy things. And I would have been really, really, because, you know, food addiction ain't funny. And I would have been just like really jonesing, you know, wanting all of that. And I'd have been so upset that I couldn't eat what I wanted to that I'd have probably gone off my diet. But as it is, with the carnivore diet, it gives you kind of that, I don't know, control. It's weird. It's really strange. Mm. I was really content. And I had one plate. And I was like, oh, I should eat more. I should get my money's worth. This is pretty expensive. It was lunchtime, so it was like $11, $12. And, um, but I was so satiated after all that meat. I was like, I'm good. I'm good. And I wasn't anxious or upset or anything. And that was interesting to me. Because I would have on any other diet been kind of upset and anxious and just, you know, in general in a bad mood because I couldn't get what I wanted and what I thought I was going to have. So I thought I'd share that with you in case some of you others feel the same way. Now, is the carnivore diet expensive? And, and we all said, and I said at first, that yeah, it was when you first put all this meat and cheese and, and uh, heavy whipping cream and stuff into your house. However, I had another epiphany. It struck me as I was walking through the grocery store the other day that my mindset has changed. And I'm walking through the grocery store and the first thing I do when I walk in is you see the produce section. All that fiber, the, <laughs> the fruit, the veggies, and it's so pretty and colorful. I don't think I'd ever noticed how vibrant and pretty vegetables were before. Now I look at them and I go, oh, that's so pretty. It's like a painting, you know. Nothing but fiber, not for me. This is not for this body. And when I walk along, I'm like, yep, nope, that's not food. Nope, nope, no. Nope. But it's when you get to the middle aisles that it really, the thought process gets really interesting. And I've discovered something about America. And that is that there is no real food in our supermarkets. Everything is chemicals and man-made. And you know what? I'm taking you. We're going to go to the grocery store, and you're going to hear the weird thoughts that run through my head hopefully we'll get away with this and they will not stop me from filming because I don't have a stealth camera anymore. You can definitely tell I'm filming. So, uh, 
Let's go and do that. Scud, what do you think? Pork? Mmm. <laughs> I don't really need anything from the store. I'm just taking you all along because today is a little bit of an exciting day. I have a man who has agreed to come fix the plumbing, but it won't be until this evening. So I'm killing time during the day and taking you with us. Fall, it is fall here in Missouri. And uh, everybody's talking about snow for Halloween. We may get a skiff. Uh, my grandmother always said if it snows before or on Halloween, it's gonna be a rough winter. I don't know about that. We're pretty blessed around here. We are smack dab in the middle of the United States and everything either goes north of us or it goes south of us. So uh, we're in a nice little pocket here, but it is cold today. I think we're down to almost freezing, about 37 degrees or so. Freezing's 32. So uh, yeah, it's a good day to get in the car, bundle up with a sweater and a sweatshirt and everything else. Yeah, I don't look like I've lost any weight now. I look like the Michelin woman. Uh, but uh, I'm letting the car warm up a little and then we're gonna take off. I have uploaded a few fall color pictures to my uh, Facebook if you have befriended me on Facebook. And uh, they were really beautiful in Colombia. We went back there and I had the glasses adjusted so I don't feel like I'm in a fishbowl so much, you know. And um, I'm trying to get used to the bifocals, guys. I really, really am. Oh, you want to see the other pair? What do you think? Mom and everybody likes this pair. I'm kind of saving them for good. <laughs> I can actually see out of this pair just a little bit better. So uh, I figure if I get used to this pair, then this pair will be easy to see out of. <laughs> Maybe I'll wear this pair today. I've decided to come to a little local country mart, which is like a little grocery store. Uh, it's one where I occasionally can find smoked pork that's plain for sale. And um, I figured they had less security. We're gonna have to do this stealth wise. They don't like you filming in the grocery stores. So I'm not sure why. They think you're spying for the competition. <laughs> it's what competition? Walmart. That's about it. But I'm gonna go in and see if we can do a quick little run through and kind of look at the inside of the store. And for those of you who don't live in the United States, you'd be like, oh, so that's what their grocery, little country grocery stores look like. Let's try it. Hi, I have decided to narrate this for just a little bit. Uh, this is bread. You start off with all the carbohydrates in the world, and then there's donuts and sugar and sweet things and spices. And then, of course, there's alcohol, carbohydrates, also sugar. And then we get into the vegetables, also carbohydrates, also <laughs> sugars, even though they're natural. And, you know, you just walk down these aisles looking at all this stuff, and it's like, no, not for the carnivore diet, no. And I used to just think, you know, vegetables were so good. And now I'm like, they just caused me to gain weight. Let me get on down here a little further and you see more alcohol. Uh, they had a really great buy. You get a whole brick of bud, I think, for about $14, $15. Isn't that nuts? And we come on around the corner here and then we're going to get into some meats and things like that, which, you know, this is okay. I am just cruising the perimeter of the store at this point. We haven't gone into the middle of the aisles. So there we have uh, cheeses, some packaged cheeses, um, coming up into some, uh, what is that? Oh, there we go, packaged meats. This is like deli uh, things. I was really surprised that the budding had a roast beef that was zero carb. That, that was a bit of a shock, actually. Then I came on down, hot dogs, when you look at the package on hot dogs, most of them have a lot of filler. You're talking five to six carbs per dog. So I was checking them out. I checked out that package in particular were like natural hot dogs. And I thought, ah, oh, this is great. Uh, but no, they still had six carbs. I wonder what they put in those things that causes that. I'm going to move on down. I kind of glanced at the pickles there for a moment. Those are the ones in the cooler. And um, we're heading uh, on over here to some more uh, things. 
What have I got now? Oh, meat. Yes, I'm still in the meat section. They had some great buys on meat. As a matter of fact, here in a little bit, I'm going to find a pretty good bargain on a beef roast. So we could fast forward to that. And here's where, you know, you turn the corner into the middle of the aisles and you get chips and crackers and more chips and all of this stuff that, you know, I used to buy. And, uh, you know, shaving cheeses and all the chemical uh, foods, cookies, look at there. I mean, there's more cookies than you can shake a stick at. I'm trying to adjust the camera here. <laughs> I think I just succeeded in like killing a corner, but of the filming, but I was trying to get a little stealthier and all of this sugary, sweet deliciousness. Um, here's a canned meat section with tuna and stuff. I am going to stop and check that out a little bit, but you still have to read the ingredients. More chips, look at this, more carbohydrates, it's killing me. And uh, dips and sweet dips and carbohydrate dips and everything. Um, on the tuna, We'll go back and check that in just a little bit. Oh, I'm checking the carbs on a package of pork rinds. Guys, you got to check every single package. Those actually were barbecued and they had some carbs. Got to be careful with that one. They'll catch you. Uh, the tuna had, uh, one of the packages had a little bit of carb in it. I'm not sure what they put in it to cause that, but uh, you, even on your canned meats and things, you have got to read the back of them. You never know what they're using for filler or what they've done. And so we'll head on down here and check out a few more center aisle items. I know uh, they're pickles and olives and stuff like that. Really just unnecessary food as far as I am concerned. I found a little treasure. It was a sugar-free steak sauce and it had one carb per like tablespoon. Uh, I, I'm taking that. Absolutely. And I'm going to pick up some more of my sugar-free barbecue sauce. Sugar-free does not mean it is carb-free. It is one of those flavoring things that I am willing to make a sacrifice for in order to stay on the carnivore diet. Again, you have to pick your battles, guys. You know, I got rid of diet soda. I've given up uh, caffeinated coffee for the most part. I drink decaf mostly now, uh, except when I'm out and about. And, you know, I think you have to pick and choose your battles. And you don't want to thin yourself down so much on lack of flavor or and be miserable with the diet. So it's worth it to have a little flavor, in my opinion. But you, like I said, pick your battles. Uh, I have mayonnaise at home. Something I didn't need but could have. Mayonnaise typically, zero carbs. But again, read the back of those packages because it'll sneak up on you and fool you for sure. A little fast on out here a little bit and probably get down the uh, goodie aisle. They had a lot of sugary items for sale because it is Halloween and Halloween in the United States equals sugary goodness. Uh, this aisle here is nothing but chemicals, guys. All processed chemical foods, packaged, pre-packaged. Like I said, there's your tuna, but watch out for it. Read those packages. And we're going to fast forward on out of here. I have one thing to say about this aisle right here, and it is all candy and cereals. And my one thing to say is no, 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 and no.
And here's another thing is your creamers. Um, really read, be careful. This is a battle you need to pick and choose too. I do do sugar-free creamers, even though there's carbs in them. Of course, heavy whipping cream is always your best. But uh, yeah, pick and choose your battles. There was no sugar-free here. Looking here a little bit at the butter. Goodbye on butter. Never pass that up. <laughs> Seriously, guys, I don't even have to say it, do I? The bakery. Run. Run hard. Run fast. Right past it. Again, big part of the store, all your sodas. And again, I love diet soda. You know I love it, and I gave it up. It was well worth giving up, though, because for some reason, that diet, dark diet soda keeps you from losing weight. I don't know why, but it certainly does me. And again, run. Run past it. <laughs> do not stop. Okay, yeah, guys, that wasn't easy, and it was kind of scary trying to stealth film, you know. I wish you could just go ahead and film, but uh, they don't like that. I realized about three-fourths of the way through, I looked like I was probably hiding something or stealing things. I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> they're probably going to come after me. But, that being said, I, that's what I mean. There's just not a whole lot. I mean, this place has more meat and stuff selection. I was pretty impressed with that one... Uh, cheap, uh, uh, I call fast meat in the package is the deli, little deli meat. The roast beef was zero carb. I was like, wow, unusual. Usually there's some carbs in those deli meats. And this was a great buy. I thought $8 for this uh, rather fatty looking roast, which I, it looks pretty well marbled, so I'm hoping it's tender. And of course, we picked up some sugar-free flavorings, which uh, I was impressed with the one carb in the steak sauce. So that's it. The $2.15 butter. I couldn't pass that up. I didn't need two of them. I already have some butter at home, which is the Amish butter. But um, yeah, so expensive. It was $20 bill. And I have to tell you, when I wasn't on the carnivore diet, I would have had cereals, some of those beautiful looking breads, uh, gorgeous desserts. I hope that picture turned out. That one cake was amazing. Um, I would have bought all of that stuff, not to mention the sodas and things. It would have easily ran me 80 bucks. 50 to 80 dollars to have gotten out of that store and on the carnivore diet I got out for $20 bill so you be the judge you know I think the carnivore diet even though each item is higher priced in the long run there's so much less for you to buy <laughs> or that you can buy so there you go well I won't know if any of that footage is any good from the grocery store until after I get it off of here and try to work with it but I hope that maybe in some ways that that helped to dispel the myth that the carnivore diet is more expensive. It is maybe at first if you don't have meat in your house or eggs or cheese and you want to stock up. But from then on, I can spend $30, $40 at the most a week and uh, that's enough meat and cheese and I of course got eggs. I let the chickens out, by the way, because I felt sorry for them. <laughs> Even though it's wet, cold, and raining out there today. And, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the trip. <laughs> like, share, and subscribe to keep up with the insanity. Guys, have a lovely day. I, If you're in California and you need rain, I hope I can send some that way. Uh, I wish I could keep the cold from coming, guys, but it's coming. And you guys up north, batten the hatches. Looks like you're going to get a lot of snow this winter. Bye-bye. Ow! That... Dude. That was my leg. Why do you have to scratch my leg? I know it's cold. I know. That's why you've been wanting to come up and love on me all day long. What? what? Oh, don't put you down? I just got snuggied. Mary, I'm filming wet ground for you. 
because I know out in California you all are in a drought. This was, the rain has filled up all the buckets. We have had quite a bit of rain and it's cold. Ladies, I'm sorry. It is too cold and muddy out here for you guys. You're just gonna have to stay in and eat chicken feed today. If I get any trick-or-treaters, they're getting Play-Doh. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a great thing to have. And, right? Right, Olivia? That was a great thing to have instead of candy in the house, which might tempt me. Just might, a little, yeah. Oh, what a bad girl you are. Bad cat. <laughs> as long as I was quiet, no problem. But, you know, the cat got up here. Now the dog. Milk her. Oh, God. Help. <laughs> On you can see about yeah, what, when people wonder why I'm not vlogging a lot lately. Like, oh, goodness. <laughs> Put the weather on so the kitties will be entertained. There. Around that area, maybe one to four inches. Most of the snow in here keeps them off my lap. It's going to be light. Okay, it's going to be very light in this area. Draw some more lines. I like the lines. Uh, as much. Now for, hall, for fall, there's a decent area right here for the best snowfall. As you can see. <laughs> we'll look at a couple other. You got enough blankets on you, Miss Betsy? Oh, I don't know. It's kind of cold out. And all snuggly. Hmm. Dude, leave her alone. Are you going to get under the covers too? No, you're just going to gnaw on the kitty. You guys are rotten. Oh. What do you think, Bart? Is he annoying or what? He's annoying. I was trying to sleep. Scud. That's why your name is Scud. Everywhere you go, it's a disaster. Are you getting under the covers too, Bert? How about you, Ollie? She says, no, I just came up to see that crazy dog. What is he doing? I have no idea. What are you doing, crazy dog? It's good. You're a nut. High five. Uh, <laughs> low five. Low five. Okay, I'll take that. 